Hi Booktube, it's Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you my August wrap up. Now, I should just say that I actually filmed August wrap up part one a few weeks ago, but unfortunately I ended up having tech issues and because it was then becoming so late, I had to abandon completely that film, unfortunately. So today I'm afraid you're going to get the whole wrap up, the whole month, which is 11 books. Consequently, that means that I'm not going to be talking too long, unfortunately, about each of these books um, as we move through. And the other thing I should say is that um, a couple of days ago, I had a little minor operation um, to have a lump removed from the inside of my mouth. And hence, I've got a whole load of stitches in my mouth and my lip, thankfully, is a little less swollen. But as you can probably see, it's all bruised. <laughs> A bit yucky. So I look like I've been in a boxing match um, and I'm sorry if my speech is a little bit funny but yeah just wanted to give you a heads up um, that I'm fine <laughs> but that's what's happened in the last couple of days. So I thought today I would do what I've seen several booktubers do and talk about their books in ascending order of star rating and my lowest star rating was three stars so I'm going to kick off with that and if you can hang on you'll get the five stars at the end and the only three, three star I had was Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. And this is not my usual genre, this is YA fantasy and follows a young girl, 17 year old girl called Mare Barrow. And she is part of the Reds, which are the commoners in this fantasy world. And there are, of course, the Silver Elite. And she finds herself um, taking a role within the Silver Palace. And because she has special powers, the um, Silvers are a little bit fearful of her and make, give her a special role and make her a princess to a silver prince. But she is going to furtively help the Reds. Of course, there's romance. Um, and I found the pacing really good. Great fun. Um, but I felt like I was reading The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So I felt like I'd sort of read it before. So yeah, fun book, but I'm, I won't be continuing the series. Now onto the 3.5 star books and the first one being The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. Now this got a buzz, lots of buzz last year because of it making the shortlist for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2022. And I found this one quite hard to rate. It's very unusual. Um, it's about Tuki who um, at the very beginning of the book is arrested for helping a friend to move a corpse and finds herself in prison. When she's released, she's working in an independent bookshop. And I loved all that, all the book stuff within this book. But it's also about this ghost of Flora who used to come to the bookshop and for a whole year she haunts this bookshop and Tuki is trying to get to the bottom of this. This book is really about Tuki and her as a person, her relationships and the ways, the customs of her indigenous people. Louise Erdrich herself is an indigenous author, which is why it was fascinating. A, a young colleague of mine lent me this book. Um, and actually, it was the first book I've read that features COVID, which is very interesting as well. Although there were a few moments when I was like, oh, yes, I remember that some of those feelings. I... The writing is very good, really, really good. But I did find a little bit of disconnect with Tuki. I wasn't totally invested in her story. So yeah, I found myself pulling out at times um, from this one, hence the 3.5 stars. The next 3.5 stars is A Spool of Blue Thread by Anne Tyler. And this was all about Abby and Red. And they are getting very old now and they are sat on the porch of their big house, um, a house that they can really no longer cope with. And they've got some of their children and their grandchildren there and they're reflecting on the past, which they've done before. And this goes back to the 1950s when Abby and Red first met. And in true Anne Styler style, we get all different stories coming together here and there about how Abby and Red met, all the stories of their children and those siblings and those grandchildren. And we even actually go even further to Abby and Red's parents themselves. If you're an Anne Tyler fan, you, this is typical Anne Tyler. It's all about the characters and the plot line is very, very quiet. Um, and you wonder where it's going. Um, I was in an Anne Tyler mood, so I really liked um, getting alongside all the characters and was just really loved sitting with them. However, there is a very icky storyline in this to do with Red's parents 
with a guy who's in his 20s having a relationship with a very young teenage girl and I really found that quite um yeah re repulsive and it's a shame because I wish she hadn't put that bit in really so yeah but otherwise um meandering story quiet story so 3.5 stars now the next 3.5 stars is the book that you the subscribers chose for me and that was Scrublands by Chris Hammer and this is a thriller set in Australia this is the first in the series by um called the Martin Skarsen series and he is a journalist and Martin Skarsen is returning to this small town in Australia a year after a mass killing it um, caused at the time a lot of media presence because it was a priest who came out front of his church and shot dead five local people. So Martin is returning a year later to find out how the community is doing. Um, it was one of the local policemen that shot dead the priest at the time. And as Martin delves deeper, he discovers that there was more than one crime going on here. Was the priest really a priest or was it a secret identity? And he soon discovers that there was a lot more to this guy and also that actually we have not one but four different crimes going on here. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting the way he got to infiltrate the community and got to know the different people. But there were a couple of things that irked me. One of the things was it was way too long. It was almost like 500 pages. And I felt like for a thriller, I just felt that it just went on and on and on a little bit. And it's lots of the elements of it, not lots of the elements, but some of the elements could have been shaved off, um, particularly in some of his personal relationship parts that develop within it. And also, there is a huge amount of swearing in this book. You often expect it in thrillers because they're very gritty and especially, I don't mind it so much in exclamation, but I just felt the name calling and unnecessary swearing was just too much for me. So yeah, that knocked it down from a four star to a 3.5. But yeah, um, interesting book. And thank you for all those who um, voted for that one because I'm really pleased that I got to it. And as I say, the Australia setting was really, really good as well. Now onto the four stars and the first one being Just the Essentials by Adina Gregori. And this is a non-fiction. I have recently got back into using essential oils and I wanted a book that was just sort of an up-to-date, informative, fun and chatty book and this is exactly what this one was got this one through my library and it tells you lots of information about the oils and is great for beginners and gives you like diy recipes and tells you how you can incorporate oils into your everyday life so yeah really enjoyed this one would be very interested to hear from you if any of you use essential oils and which ones are your favorites yeah so please share that down um below i'd love to hear that as well and another four stars was a very sweet contemporary called Looking for the Durrells by Melanie Hewitt. Um, as you'll see a little bit further on in my five star books, um, I had some quite dark books and I really needed something light and to lift myself. It was also the beginning of the academic year and I had like brain mush and I just wanted something sweet and lovely. And this book was perfect. So and another day it probably would have got three stars but it got four stars because I was really looking forward to reading it and it was the right book at the right time and this is all about Penny who her relationship has all gone horribly wrong in England and her beloved dad has passed away and her favourite book from childhood was My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell and I love this book this memoir and so Penny thinks she's going to fulfill a childhood dream and go back to Corfu, which is where, of course, the Durrells lived for many years. And she's going to retrace their steps and find out where they lived and where they went and spent their time there. And that's what she does. And of course, she um, there's a lovely, very sweet romance in here. Nothing graphic, really lovely. And also um, she sort of gets to know lots of people in the community. So, yeah, really delightful four stars.
And the next four stars is a book that certainly was not sweet and delightful, but I really enjoyed nonetheless. And that is Inez of My Soul by Isabel Allende. And I read this for Women in Translation. I had intended to read House of Spirits by Allende, but I could not source it from my library. So I turned to this one instead, and I was not disappointed. It is based on the true story of Inez Suarez, who was a real person, and we are in 16th century. And she, um, grew up um, in a poor area in Spain, but she marries young and when her husband um, embarks on this journey to South America, she finds herself also with time going over to South America, starting off in Peru. Her husband dies in battle and she falls in love with Pedro de Valdivia, who again was a real person. She starts a very intense love affair and plays an integral role in the founding of Chile. So a lot of this book is set between Peru and you see her embark on a really sort of perilous adventure through desert and mountains right the way through to Chile and you see a lot of it based in Santiago as well. What Allende does so well is draw on true historical and political events. And so you get all of those details of this time. There is a lot about the displacement of the local Indian people here and these very bloodthirsty, intense battles um, between the Spanish um, who were coming in and these Indian people. And of course, then it's all about as well the characters that she writes so well and there's always very passionate detailed love stories within them and you hear of three different love um interests if you like that um in yes soirees had three different men who she loved very very much but you also get a very interesting storyline because she's writing as though she's 70 years old and she's writing, she's telling her daughter, I think it is daughter or granddaughter, all about her life and being very honest about it. And um, because the daughter is going to be writing a memoir of her mother's life. So yeah, really, really enjoyed it again and will continue to read Allende's work. My last four stars is The Lincoln Highway by Amor Towers and I buddy read this with the lovely Sue Jackson and I will link her channel down below. It was our first buddy read and together and we loved it. We shared so much of our own lives as well as reading this book and it's a chunker. This is set in 1950s and follows a young guy called Emmett Watson, who's I think 18 years old. He's just served a year in, um, in a youth detention centre for involuntary manslaughter. He arrives home in Nebraska, his mother has run away, his dad has passed away and his eight-year-old brother Billy is there. Billy is a very smart, gorgeous kid and he's been collecting postcards from his mother and works out that she is on the west um, in uh, San Francisco there and he wants to go and make that journey to go and find her. Um, Billy persuades Emmett to travel the Lincoln Highway. They're going to do east to west and they're going to go and find their mother. But there is a little hitch because out of the trunk of the car comes Woolly and Duchess and these are two lads which were with in the youth detention center with Emmett and they've surprised him by turning up and they have a key role in changing all the plans. Instead of heading west they end up heading east to New York and this book is all about the twists and turns of this adventure. It's a real adventure story. You get all different perspectives, you get first person perspective, you get third person perspective, there's a lovely woman called Sally within this as well. There are a range of characters that you follow and all the mishaps they have. And there are some sinister parts as well as some beautiful, heartwarming, delightful parts as well. So character wise, I loved it. I found it though a little too detailed. It is a massive book. I think it comes in at 670 pages. I felt at times that the some of the side characters, you know, we'd have a new side character and suddenly we'd get all their backstory as well. I felt it was a little bit overloaded on detail and I would have preferred the story to have moved on uh, more quickly than it did. Um, I 
I was reading other books at the same time. I had about three or four books on the go, whereas I know that Sue purely read this one. And I think she did it the right way because you, she just totally absorbed into this world. And it's almost what you need to do with it. Whereas I was flitting between books and then I'd come back to this one and I'd almost want it to move on quicker than it did. So um, I probably spoiled it a little bit like that. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant writing, but the ending, if you've read the book, the ending crushed me and angered me. That's all I'll say. <laughs> and Sue and I left big messages for each other when the ending came. But yeah, that's The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tells. Now, one of 4.5 stars book was From Scratch by Tembi Locke. And I read this for my book group here in Singapore. And oh, this was a wonderful book, but so emotional and very well written. I didn't realize that Tenby Locke is actually the sister of Attica Locke, who is the black crime writer, which I still need to get some of her work. But this memoir is beautiful, it is stunning. It's all about a black American woman who, when she's in her 20s, she's doing a placement in Italy, in Florence, and meets Saro, who is an Italian chef. He's from the island of Sicily. They fall in love, he follows her to America, and consequently he is disowned by his Sicilian family. They can't get their heads around the fact that he is not returning to Sicily, his Italian background, and he's fallen in love with a black American woman. They marry. Unfortunately, he is diagnosed with cancer. They go through all of this. Thankfully, they're reunited with the family back in Italy. Um, the, before the cancer returns, they are able to adopt a lovely little girl, a gorgeous little girl in America, and but then the cancer returns. And we learn very early on that Saro passes away. And to find the healing process and to scatter some of his ashes in his homeland of Sicily, Tembi and her daughter return to Sicily for three summers in a row and it helps them to heal and to grieve and to mourn. And as she immerses herself um, in the Sicilian countryside, in the community, amongst the food, and forms a very close relationship with her mother-in-law as well. And you see the mother-in-law, the grandmother and the granddaughter build a very special bond as well. It was beautiful. It's, it, it flits backwards and forwards in time. So you can be in one timeline, you go back to her caring for her husband, and then you go back to them trying to adopt the girl, and then you go back to... Um, the latter summers in Sicily and but she writes so beautifully and she's so open about the grief she really is about how she struggled with it and about how when she was caring for Saro and those days when she describes the last days of his life as well it's um oh it really has all the feels so I have yet to watch the Netflix um show which I know is based on it I think it's slightly different from what I hear from my people in my book group but yeah wasn't quite five stars, wasn't completely compelling writing, but yeah, really, really um, enjoyed, if that's the word, but very moving story and would recommend this one. Now onto my five star books. And the first one is The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel. I read this one as well for my book group here in Singapore and I loved this book. Um, I was on holiday at the time and I just was able to have that time to absorb completely into the world and read it really quickly. This is set in World War II, so historical fiction, and we are following a young Jewish girl called Eva. She lives in Paris with her parents. One day, however, the Nazis come and they take her dad away to a concentration camp. Consequently, Eva and her mother escape down to the south of France to a town called Orignon. There, she meets a Catholic priest who is heavily involved in a forgery network. And Eva cannot resist getting involved in this and using her skills. She discovers she's a great forgerer. And lead, that leads on to her working in a team who are forging paperwork and documents for Jewish children to escape out of France and get safely into um, Switzerland across the border. Um, so she risks huge amount and there is also a very sweet love story within this. But you know, this, the love story doesn't 
it's not the focus really. For me, it was all about the fact that this is based actually on a true story, that there were there was this whole forgery network and the risks that these people took to save others. I was really impacted emotionally by the story. And at the end, actually, I was sitting at the airport um, in Borneo, in the Kota Kinabalu, and I was reading the final chapters, and I had, it was so embarrassing because I had tears rolling down, down my cheeks. I was so moved on, in so many ways by this book, by the gravity of the situation, the injustice of it, and the bravery of the people involved. And I should just say, there is actually a current storyline going on as well. Um, Eva, as an old lady who sees an advert about this book and what I should say I've forgotten to say them the title is called the book of lost names and what she wanted to do so that the identity of these children would not be lost forever in this book she secretly codes the names of these children so she hopes that post-war they will be able to go back and find their true identity yeah so I loved it if you love Chris and Hannah um things like the Nightingale or Lilac Girls by Martha Hall Kelly then I really think you'll enjoy this one it was my first Kristen Harmel and it won't be my last if you have another Kristen Harmel to recommend to me I see she has a massive backlist I would really appreciate it and my second to five stars of today is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I buddy read this with a lovely Burner from Burner's Bookish Adventures. Always love buddy reading with Burner. We have such great conversations about it. And this is quite a book. <laughs> this is a modern classic and rightly so. The writing in this book is phenomenal. It's probably the best written book I've read this year. Um, the descriptions of Paris within this book were incredible. I was transported right back to my days of visiting Paris when I lived in France. I absolutely loved it. So this is set in 1950s and we are following a young American guy called David. He is in engaged to a woman called Hella and they are in Paris together, but Hella decides that she needs some space before they embark on the marriage route, and she takes herself off on a holiday to Spain. While she's there, David meets Giovanni in a bar in Paris, and is, there is an instant attraction between the two men, and consequently, they embark on a relationship together leading to David moving into Giovanni's apartment and his room, hence Giovanni's room. But Hella is going to return. And so without spoiling the book, what is David going to do? And it, it well, it's, it's quite amazing. The roller coaster of emotions that this book takes you on, you are... You are heartbroken, you are angry, you are frustrated with some of his decisions and you see the emotions of both men and Hella as well. Interestingly, at the beginning of this story, you almost get an insight into what's coming at the very end because you know there is a doomed ending here. Um, and so you are working through all the stages in between as you go through the book, which is a really clever structure. But yeah, um, very emotional, quite a dark book in some ways, it makes you feel uncomfortable, but it's just so beautifully written that you cannot help be drawn in to the emotions of all these characters at this time. And of course, this was a time, a time setting of 1950s where, you know, um, to be homosexual was so frowned upon and there was no openness of emotions and feelings so you get all of that element impacted into the story but yeah it was my first James Baldwin and it certainly won't be my last either. So there we go there are my 11 books that I managed to read in the month of August. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts on any of these books and please tell me what was your favourite book of August? Did you have any five stars? Um, I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that by the time I see you next, my <laughs> my bruising and my swelling might have gone down and I can talk properly again. But um, please take care. Please connect with me. I love the connection with you and I'll see you again soon. Bye.